Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are all doing really well. Now for today's video, as you can tell by the title of this video, I'll be sharing with you why I quit my CA study, my chartered accountancy studies, and how I'm actually still making a six-figure salary. So if you guys are interested, then please continue watching. And if you haven't already, then please do subscribe to my channel down below. And let's just get started on this video. So just to preface this video a little bit, just wanted to create this video just to give you guys an indication and just to give you guys a little bit of more sort of variety and more options in your life and just let you know because I know a lot of my friends a lot of people around me um, are going through this currently deciding whether they want to you know pursue their CA or not so I thought this video would be beneficial I'm not here to brag about anything you know I haven't done the CA but I'm still um, happy in my job I am still able to earn the amount of money which I am earning so I feel like CA is not something that you always have to to do so I wanted to outline a few points which sort of you know you guys should take into consideration before thinking about you know stepping into the whole you know post-grad study sort of program now all the information that I will be providing is based off of my own experience this is exactly what I went through and this is why I think um, if you're in the risk consulting or internal audit fields you do not need to do your CA that's personally what I think it's my opinion um, I'm saying this based off of all of my experience so so if you're in the same boat as me or if you've, um, you know, you're currently in a job and you're thinking about the same thing that I did a few years ago, then this is definitely the video for you. So I'm just going to start off by giving you guys a little bit of context and background as to what you know, I did at KPMG and how I sort of came about that decision to quit my CA. I worked at KPMG for about two and a half years. I was there as a graduate, I started off as a graduate and I worked my way um, for two and a half years to almost become a senior consultant. So I left just before becoming a senior consultant because obviously there were other opportunities for me. So I took that, but in my whole entire two and a half years, I did not need to do anything that was accounting related, anything that was sort of finance related. I I mean, let me just explain to you. So basically, if you're an internal auditor or um, you know risk consultant, you do sort of dive into the finance controls, credit controls, etc., etc. But you're not there to sort of do calculations and do accounting per se. It's a compliance kind of thing. So you're just sort of going in, checking to make sure that their controls are intact and they're working. You don't need to do anything to look at financial, you know, statements, etc., etc. I feel like that's what external audit or audit do. So that was my. Experience. One thing that I did want to mention was definitely when you go out to clients and, and when you're at the client site, they sort of expect you to have your CA, which is really interesting. They just feel like all, you know, big four accountants or auditors have their CA and have like super high qualifications, are super smart, blah, blah, blah. But really, that's not the case. I mean, it definitely wasn't for me. And I know for a few other people that were in my cohort as well, we actually all came from different backgrounds. So some were from like psychology, science, engineering and a lot of them didn't actually go ahead and pursue you know CA studies as well when I was sort of entered in that situation where a client you know knew that I didn't have my CA they sort of think that you lose credibility they don't have that trust in you but to be really honest you're not gonna apply any of those um, CA skills into your day-to-day -day activities while being a risk consultant or an internal auditor so I sort of thought that it was not beneficial in in that regards you just got to explain to the client just to make sure that you you know they trust you etc etc that you're not really testing the financial aspect of things you're looking more you know bird's eye view just to make sure the control perspective is operating effectively and just to let you know a lot of people at KPMG were just studying CA just for the sake of it because they didn't know what else to study and they felt like because everyone's doing it they, they should sort of jump on the bandwagon and start studying CA whether it provide them any value or not because obviously as you all know you know Everyone says that CA is just really, um, it's really good. It's a good qualification to have. Um, if you want to change from organization to organization, people look at it very highly and, you know, you're sort of ranked higher when you are, you know, going through that interview process, etc., etc. I mean, that's all well and good, but I'm not here to, like, you know, bag out the CA. I mean, if you really want to do it, you can do it. Um, there's no harm in doing it. If you've got the time available, then definitely do it. I just feel like people should be out there and just making sure that they know all of their options, they know exactly what they're getting themselves into, and not just do something for the sake of doing it or not doing it for the sake of, you know, other people are doing it, so I'm going to do it as well. So that's what I sort of found, you know, working at one of the big four accounting firms. Anyway, so essentially, I was 
one of those people. I gave in and I wanted to do CA because obviously, you know, coming from an Indian background as well, um, being an ethnic person, you know, there's a bit of influence, you know, um, from your parents, from, you know, family, etc. telling you, you know, your CA is like, it's really highly weighted. People take a lot of consideration and they really acknowledge the CA. I was, you know, sort of in that mindset, oh my God, like I have to do the CA, everyone's doing it. I can get the best job in the world and I will be set for life, blah, 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 blah. So I gave in and I started doing my CA. Now, to give you guys a little bit of more context, um, during my university course, I started doing accounting or finance. So basically, I did economics and commercial law. So with the CA, especially in Australia, I know that you have to have done some sort of prerequisite study that can you know, credit your um, degree that you did at uni and then you're able to do the CA. Whereas in my case, I actually didn't do any of the accounting subjects. So I had to actually do a bridging course. Now, this bridging course would allow me to sort of gain those credits or those prerequisite courses to be able to do the actual CA. So I started off with the bridging course. Now the bridging course, it depends on how many subjects you are going to be credited depending on how many subjects you did at uni that were relevant for the CA. So maximum um, bridging course subjects that you need to do is 12 and then depending on what you did at uni, you can have those credited. So my economics ones were credited and I think my commercial law one was credited as well. So those were two of the subjects that I didn't have to do. So then I was left to do 10 um, bridging course units. Now, I did two units for the first semester just to get a feel of how everything was going and if I really wanted to get you know, involved with all of this. So I only picked two. The maximum you can pick is four for the semester, but given that I was still working at the time as well, I had to make sure that you know I could balance my life and I had a social life. So I started off, I think I did one of the basic accountings and then I did another second level accounting. To be honest, I quickly realized that CA was definitely not for me. I am not a numbers person, I am not a person that can sort of sit there and study and focus. While having done that already at uni, I feel like I've just lost the touch of just studying and sitting there and concentrating. So quickly realized that was not for me, I still went ahead and did the two um, exams. I had passed the exams which were good um, by like just this much to be honest, I just passed. So I... Just like, I felt like when I was doing my bridging course, I didn't feel the passion. I felt like it was something that was forced and I didn't really commit to it. And I kept sort of just putting it off and it wasn't something that I was interested in because, you know, just hearing a lot of, you know, conflicting views around me saying, some people saying that you should do the CA, some people saying you shouldn't do it, it's not required for you. Um, people saying, you know, you should do it because it'll let you can leverage and you can, you know, gain other better opportunities in life. So. There was a lot of conflicting views and then I just sat down one day and I was like, is this really something I want to do and dedicate, you know, the next essentially three or four years of my life studying because I have to do the bridging course subjects as well on top of the CA. CA I think is about a year and a half to two years. So I was like, did I really want to sit there for four years and study um, and study for something that I wasn't really passionate about? I feel like because it was not valued or it wasn't actually used in my day-to-day -day job, I felt that I didn't actually need to do it. And it was just something that I was doing for the sake of doing it. And that was not making me happy, so I quit. So all the positives for me to leave were outweighing the negatives. And that is why I quit. As soon as I had quit, actually, like, even though I had to pay for the two um, subjects, I quit instantly and I felt like a massive weight was put off my shoulders. I was like drowning in the amount of study that I had to do. It was really funny. And I had to study over summer break as well um, during the summer holidays and like all my friends were out and I didn't like that. I really was about, I'm a person that's all about, you know, work-life balance, socializing and doing things that you love and you aren't forced to do. So I was always about that. So I don't know why I jumped into this. So my bad for like jumping on and not, you know, properly doing my research. So I just wanted to give you guys a little bit more context as to why I actually quit my CA. Um, so that's sort of the backstory. I feel like I've already given you the answers. So five reasons why I quit the CA. First one was I hate studying. I can't sit there. I don't have the patience to sit there for long hours to sit there and study and do something else especially you know after leaving uni I felt like I was done with that study life I was so happy when I left uni that you know I never had to study again um, and then here I was doing my CA and I was just like hating life so I don't want to sound like you know CA is so bad like it's you know you should never do it blah 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 but you've got to just make sure you know what you're doing 
you've done your research and you've spoken to different people as well. I've just felt that my time could be better utilized elsewhere, um, especially because at the time I was also looking to starting my YouTube channel as well. I was like, do I want to sit there studying for four years of my life and not being able to start a YouTube channel, something that I absolutely love and I really want to do, or, you know, sit there studying. So I feel like that was just a good way for me to sort of weigh things out. If you're in the same boat as me, then I do definitely recommend just seeing what your options are. Um, if you know you struggle at studying and if you know that you can't sit there for long periods of time um, doing something that you don't like and something that's not required of you, then I do suggest looking at other options. Maybe it doesn't have to be a CA that you need to study. It could be something else that's actually relevant to your role as well. So be sure to do some research and look into it a bit more. Uh, for example, if you're an internal auditor or a risk consultant, you could be a certified internal auditor by getting your internal audit certificate. Um, which is also very much renowned and well known around um, the globe as well. So um, you could definitely look at other options, but because I hate studying, I did not go any further. Number two, you should not just do your CA because everyone else is doing it. Ask yourself, does this actually bring value to your current job, to the rest of your life, to your prospects, other opportunities that can be presented to you in your life? I can definitely guarantee you this. If you're in risk consulting or internal audit, you do not need your CA. You can actually go ahead without performing your CA or completing your CA because as I mentioned a lot of the work doesn't actually require that sort of financial investigation, looking at financial statements, um, any sort of calculations or accounting principles as such. You don't even need to use MyOB or MYOB, any of the accounting softwares or programs. So um, I can guarantee you definitely um, if you're in that sort of division and I was actually in FS as well. I was in financial services so it definitely does not require any sort of accounting knowledge. Um, what I can say is, I know when you are completing your CA, you do gain some skills around Excel training. Um, you can do like B lookups and just simple formulas so that it allows you to manipulate data a lot quicker, more effective and efficiently for your role. So definitely pick up maybe some courses around Excel training, um, but you can definitely do that outside in your own free time and doesn't take up as much time as your CA would. Um, but that would be one thing that I do recommend. And I'm just saying this based off my two and a half years of experience at KPMG. Um, I literally had nothing to do with accounting principles, so I was I was um, happy with that. And another thing that I wanted to mention as well is to speak to people within the organization that you work at or people that you sort of aspire to be in that position, maybe later down the track, speak to them, see what sort of qualifications they have, because I definitely did that during my time at KPMG. I spoke to a lot of different managers, um, directors, and partners as well, actually, and just spoke to them and sort of got their insight as to whether you know they had done their CAs. A lot of them had done their CAs, but because they were in higher sort of senior management positions, those requirements were set back in the day, so, um, a lot of people were required to do it because, you know, um, it was sort of a blanket rule that everyone should do their CA, otherwise, you know, you can't go ahead and get promoted to the next position. But that's obviously all changed in this modern, um, modern day life. So you can um, speak to people around you that are already in the position that you want to be in. So you speak to them. I know I definitely spoke to a lot of the managers. A few of them actually hadn't done their CAs, which was really eye-opening because they all suggested that, you know, a lot of the things that are in the CA, we definitely don't do in internal audit. So that was a big relief to me to know that someone that was a manager, the next position, the next two positions above me had not done their CA and they were coping fine. They were, you know, almost going to become senior manager or associate director. One thing that they did do was the internal audit certificate. But again, I did speak to that manager about that and they basically mentioned that everything that you're doing on the job was training and it was more practical experience. And if you were to do that CIA, it's pretty much just a theoretical aspect of practically what you're already doing. So in terms of, you know, it could definitely boost your report writing skills, um, a little bit around communication, etc. But I feel like if you are working for these big organizations anyway, they do sort of invest in you and they do provide that training, you know, that upskilling that is required to sort of reach that certain level or the standard and quality of the work that is required to be delivered. So me having that chat with the manager sort of quickly ruled out that, you know, the CA was definitely not for me if it wasn't required at all. I didn't see the value in going ahead and pursuing it and, you know, taking up four years of my life. And also not to brag, but um, me not having completed the CA, a lot of people, I get a lot of details 
DMs, a lot of emails asking me, you know, if you don't do your CA, how do you move up in the industry? How do you move up in your job? I mean, I left um, one of the big four accounting firms to pursue a role in the banking industry and I was able to quickly um, get into a role that was earning a six-figure salary and without having done a CA. And, and to be quite honest with you, I actually, during the interview process of this banking role, I didn't actually get asked, you know, whether I had a CA or not. I feel like a lot of external sort of companies assume that if you're coming from one of the big four that you do have your CAs. But I mean, I was definitely not asked if I had it. I mean, they had their, they had my resume in front of them, my CV in front of them, and I had no questions asked about CA. And just to give you guys a little bit of um, perspective as well, so I'm a risk manager in my current banking role, and I've been here for a year now, and I haven't actually needed to apply any sort of CA sort of skills or accounting principles per se. I can definitely attest to the fact that you do need Excel sort of skills. It definitely does help you, which I have been doing training on that and I have mentioned that I have been doing Excel training through Skillshare. Hey guys, I hope you guys are enjoying today's video. I just quickly wanted to pop on and introduce today's sponsor, Skillshare. You guys have heard about Skillshare in my previous videos and because I love Skillshare so much, I wanted to share some of the online classes which are available with you guys as well so you're able to benefit from them. I know I mentioned a lot of the classes around Excel training which I still definitely do love, a lot of classes around motivation. Um, productivity so there's definitely a lot of courses available you just need to make sure that you do your research and find something that is of interest to you so as you guys all know Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online courses ranging from entrepreneurship marketing filmmaking drawing so yeah it's basically designed for curious and creative people who want to learn and teach yourself and just pick up a new skill so one class that I definitely did want to share with you guys was around creative breakthroughs um, eight exercises that can power you through your creativity confidence and career so this class is by Danielle Kreiser who is an artist and author from the jealous curator now this is all about you know the power of those aha moments that you have and how you can really take advantage so this has definitely been one class that I've definitely been loving you can pick and choose um, what you'd like to see and you don't need to go through the entire course but um, yeah so that was one class that I did want to share with you guys and completely off topic I wanted to actually show you guys another course which I've really been enjoying it's a filmmaking course um, filmmaking from home turnaround footage into a compelling video so this is by Penny Lane who is a filmmaker and I've just gone through here and she's really good at sort of showing you um, different editing styles and choosing clips and you know how to actually refine your videos and make it look that extra bit put together so yeah she shares what she's learned so you can also do the same as well and benefit from her and in terms of the price point Skillshare is only $10 per month with the annual subscription which is super affordable I know there's a lot of courses out there which are super inexpensive but with $10 per month um, I think this is a no-brainer so Skillshare have been nice enough to provide the first 1,000 subscribers who click on the link in the description box below and you'll be able to get a two-month free trial of the premium membership which I think is amazing so the entire library will be open You're, you'll be able to you know check out all the courses get a good feel of how everything operates and find what sort of interests you and if you're really unsure whether you want to you know go ahead and um, use Skillshare then just click on the link below try it out you've got two free months because at the end of the day it's only ten dollars per month so um, definitely check it out click on the link below and yeah thanks guys another reason why I think that you know if you're within the same field as I am then you don't need a CA is because if your job doesn't actually require it then why would you go ahead and do it you could utilize your time better elsewhere I know with a lot of the large organizations or the big four accounting firms if you did want to do some sort of study or postgraduate study um, besides CA they usually do keep a small budget for their staff members just to allow them to upskill and train themselves so if it is in line with what you're doing then you can definitely get part of your study waived or you know the firm will pay for it but you've just got to look into the internal policies and see what that what that organization you're working at offers because it can be very very expensive so definitely look into that I know I had to pay for the bridging course out of pocket and that was gonna cost me 10 grand so I know I think CA is about 7k all up 
um, which is about 17k with like further studies. Even though KPMG um, was willing to offer for the 7k, um, 10k out of my own pocket, I felt like was just a little bit too much and it was a bit too expensive and it was definitely out of my budget. So that was another reason why I didn't go ahead and pursue the CA. Now, if you are looking to pursue your CA, then you do need to think about you know how much time you need to set aside. I know there are strict deadlines and you know submitting assignments on a weekly basis and then the exams and midterm exams as well. So you definitely need to set aside some time because if you are doing the CA, um, I know definitely in Australia, then you are also working at the same time as well because in order to get your CA, I believe you have to have done two years of professional corporate experience. So a lot of people do that side by side and if you're doing that and you have a full-time job, then you do need to consider you know, the time sort of constraints and the restrictions that you've got. Um, you don't have much time after work and then the weekends are pretty much gone if you are looking to study all weekend. So it's about managing that, you know, that work-life balance and that social aspect as well. I know that definitely wasn't something I was looking to forego, uh, that work-life balance. So I was quickly to sort of say that I didn't want to go ahead with the CA, just given, you know, how many restrictions I was going to be imposed with, um, with my free time. And I was not happy about that. So... Um, yeah, that was another reason why I quit. Just to wrap up, I want to mention five points um, quickly as to why you don't need to do um, or complete your CA if you are in the same position that I am. Don't just do CA because everyone's doing it. Look outside the box and think, you know, what other courses or what other study you could possibly benefit from, something that would actually give you maybe value. Do your research. Does your job actually even require you to do a CA? If not, then I don't see why you should be going ahead and doing it. It is a good qualification to have, I mean, but if you're already in the job that you currently love, then what's the point? Like you can just move your way up into that, in that field that you're already in. People always say that, you know, you can get other opportunities, but if you're already happy in your firm and your job doesn't require it, then why go ahead and do something that's so irrelevant? Um, as mentioned, is there another degree that you could possibly do as well? So definitely make sure you do your research and speak to people around you. I've gone through this, career advisors. You can definitely ask me if you're, if you are interested um, in knowing a little bit more. So you can, you know, send me an email. You can leave a comment in the description box below and I'll definitely answer that for you but those are the reasons why I quit my CA I hope you guys found this really informative um, if you did then please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel down below and I will see you guys in my next video thanks guys